any any free release thoughts you're allowed to comment on the coming hurricane season? Trent, you might be saying. Yeah, once the NOAA seasonal hurricane forecast comes out and you've got those numbers, you've got to realize that there's a big difference between how busy the season might or may not be and how bad it might be where you live. Because in 1983, it was a way below average hurricane season with only one major hurricane the whole year. But that one major hurricane hit my town in Houston, Texas, where I was living at the time. I didn't care what the numbers were that year. I got the one. So it only takes one, and you can't hang your hat on El Nino or the seasonal forecast or any of that to tell you that you don't have a hurricane problem to prepare for this year. you got to prepare the same way every year, regardless of the seasonal forecast. So what was the name of that storm, and that, that sparked your interest to in where you are today? Well, Alicia 1983 in Houston is certainly memorable, but... It was in the 1970s when I was in South Florida watching Neil Frank, the director of the Hurricane Center at the time, briefing about Hurricane David that was approaching that really got me to look over at my parents and say, I'm going to do his job someday. And yeah. I got the chance to do it. I saw him speak in Albany in 1984. The guy was dynamic and neat and energetic and passionate. Yeah. Neil Frank is a legend in our business, and I still get to see him at hurricane conferences. There are awards named after him. He's really something. And, and there's a long line of, of, of colleagues uh, that have also been Hurricane Center directors that I have uh, learned a lot from and benefited from in doing the job. All right. Now, I've had some questions. I've been thinking about this opportunity since time is limited. Why should Washingtonians or folks in the Mid-Atlantic you know, care about hurricanes? We get a glancing blow every now and then. It's human nature to, uh, to pick out the pieces of information that you think can convince you that you don't have a hurricane problem. We all do that, but we are all a lot more hurricane vulnerable than we think, whether you're coastal, whether you're inland, whether you're in Florida, or whether you're in Maine or in Texas or anywhere in between. You know, one of these days in Florida, we're going to start getting hurricanes like the Mid-Atlantic and Northeast has been getting the last decade and a half. It's been, what, 11 years since Florida got hit by a Category 3? Since, yeah, yeah, no major hurricanes had three or stronger hitting Florida since well in 2005. But that doesn't mean we're off the hook. And just about anybody who's been through a hurricane and been seriously impacted has said afterward, wow, I, I didn't think it could be this bad. I, I, I wasn't expecting this. The good thing about hurricanes is they don't impact severely any one community very often. But when they do, it's really bad. And if you haven't prepared in advance and you're just wishing the hurricane problem away, you're putting yourself in a position of weakness. You're letting that hurricane that you never thought would come eventually shows up unexpected dictate your outcome. But if, if we take action now, it's not as expensive or as difficult or as time-consuming to prepare in advance as you think it is. But if you've got your evacuation plan, you've got all your insurance, including for flood, and you've got your supplies, and you've got a strong home, then the hurricane can't dictate the outcome for you, and you'll be hurricane strong, as we talk about. And that's the key, is I, I don't want to put my family, myself, my home at risk by not preparing. It's just not worth the risk. And if the hurricanes never come, great. But if they do, you're in charge of the outcome. So here in Washington, it seems that uh, flooding is probably the biggest risk we face. Well, wind and water are both hazards that could affect the Washington area. If you get a strong enough hurricane coming ashore, you could get hurricane force winds here. Storm surges can be pushed up the Chesapeake, up the Potomac. Heavy rainfall can cause flooding near the coast and well inland, even farther west and north than Washington. Uh, hurricanes can spawn tornadoes. The, all of the hazards that hurricanes and tropical storms pose are hazards for the Washington area, just as much as they are for any other place up and down the east coast of the Gulf Coast and inland areas of the United States. So don't think it can happen to you. What do you say to somebody who says, oh, it's just a Category 1 storm. It's not that big a deal. Yeah, we've had a lot of major impacts in the United States in the last 10 to 15 years without hardly any of them being major sand hurricanes. You just think of Ike in Texas, 2008, one of the costliest hurricanes in U.S. history is Category 2. Sandy, 2012. Isaac in 2012. Debbie, a tropical storm in 2012. None of those major hurricanes. Matthew last year when it hit the U.S., not a major hurricane. Multiple fatalities, major impacts, most of the impacts due to water. So you don't have to have a strong Category 3 or 4 or 5 hurricane by the wind to have a major impact from water. 
Yeah. Yeah. Category one storm is deadly. Absolutely. In fact, nine out of ten people who die in landfalling tropical cyclones in the United States die due to water. Wind historically has not been the deadliest hazard. Yes, wind can damage, wind can take lives, even in a tropical storm. It can knock down trees and fall into cars and homes. So wind is always a hazard. But water takes most of the lives, and you don't even need a hurricane for that to happen. Anything, tropical depression, tropical storm, can dump all kinds of rain, cause inland flooding, and we're losing too many lives. Look how many people died in Matthew last year due to the inland flooding caused by heavy rainfall. What do you say to those folks who are living on the Delaware coast or out toward Ocean City, Maryland, and they get under a hurricane warning and they're reluctant to evacuate? I would start thinking about that issue today. While the weather's good, find out today if you live in an evacuation zone. And if you do, figure out today where you'd go and how you would get there. Because if at the last minute this hurricane's on your doorstep and emergency managers are telling you to evacuate, to save your life from storm surge, and you haven't thought through how to do that evacuation, you might just decide, I don't know how to do this, I'm just not going, uh, or you might think it can't happen to me, but there are a lot of people uh, who aren't here today to tell their story about storm surge because they died in it. Even little things like having cash or knowing where a pet-friendly hotel might be, you could easily research that ahead of time. Yeah, the evacuation zones are online. You can identify a friend or a family member who lives in an inland location out of the storm surge prone areas or identify that hotel, a shelter, whatever. Figure all of that out today and then figure out what you're going to take with you. And then if an evacuation order is called, have confidence in that. These people don't fly into the hurricanes for fun. They're flying in there to collect data to make our forecasts more accurate for storm surge included, so that emergency managers can make informed evacuation decisions to save lives. And so have confidence in that evacuation instruction. And if you've thought about how to carry it out, it absolutely could save your life uh, to adhere to those evacuation instructions. It's just too risky to stay in those areas uh, and, and may or may not live to tell about it. What would you say when we see Go 16 coming online, we see some great drone technology now, why can't we get a drone to do drop sounds and collect data and just radio it back or satellite transmit it back as opposed to risking lives? Because I know it's been 40-some-odd years, I think, since we lost some folks during Typhoon Bess in the uh, China Sea, if I'm not mistaken, back in the 70s. But this is a dangerous thing. Why do we still have people doing it? There is a lot of research and development going into unmanned airborne vehicles, but it's going to be a long time before we can replace the heavy manned aircraft because they can go exactly where we need them to go. They can go into parts of the storm that the unmanned vehicles can't go and, and can't collect the data exactly where we need it. So the technology for unmanned vehicles is progressing, but it's, it's going to be a long time before we don't need the manned aircraft. A couple of things about this program that we have to fly into hurricanes. Number one is their safety record is really, really good. They've never lost a Hurricane Hunter plane in the Atlantic Basin flying into hurricanes. It's statistically, it's safer to fly into the hurricane than it is for me to drive to my office every day. But they are taking risks and they know what those risks are. They know what the dangers are that they're facing, but they go into it in form and they take steps to be as safe as they can. But the other thing is that if we don't send those planes in to get the most accurate data from inside the core of the hurricane, then we aren't getting off to as good a start on our forecast. And that means the warnings aren't as timely, the evacuation instructions aren't as timely. There's a direct connection between the data collected from these planes and your personal safety. In the last few years, you've introduced storm surge projections and the uh, possibility of uh, issuing watches, advisors, warnings based on storms that haven't yet developed that they're close to land. A, how has that helped? And B, What's the next thing that we can expect from the Hurricane Center? All right. The whole strategy here has been to focus more on the individual hazards, focus less on what's the track of the storm, what's the category of the storm, where's the cone, and focus on the wind and water hazards, where they could occur, so people know what could happen and so they can take action ahead of time. That's been the strategy, including being able to issue our forecasts and our advisories and watches and warnings after it's no longer tropical like Sandy, even before it's a tropical depression or storm, which we have the option to do this year. We want people to get the watches and warnings they need when it's time to issue those so that action can be taken. 
and we've made a lot of strides on the storm surge hazard, the deadliest hurricane hazard of all historically. But number two, right behind storm surge, is inland flooding caused by heavy rains. And as Hur Hurricane Matthew showed last year, we've got more work to do to not only get the word out ahead of time about turn around, don't drown, because so many people lost their lives in cars in North Carolina and South Carolina last year, and to urge people to get flood insurance so you can recover from the inland flooding financially afterward. But in real time, that's our next big challenge, to enhance our collection of products and warnings to really hit home on the inland flood hazard, make that front and center when it's so dangerous and deadly. Last question, you're leaving the hurricane center at the end of the week for the private sector. What are you gonna miss the most about your time as director of NHC? I'm gonna miss the people working side by side with some of the most incredible, talented people the forecasters, the programmers, the administrators, the GIS specialists, the storm surge experts, the marine forecasters that are just so multi-talented. Uh, and I'm going to miss working side by side with them. But the cool thing is, is I'll be able to be on television talking about all the stuff they're doing, talking about the new products and warnings that we have come up with. And I've, I've not lost one ounce of motivation to get the word out about hurricane preparedness and keep people safe during and after the storm. So I'm looking forward to continuing to be out there and talking about hurricanes like I always have. Well, I've been fortunate to uh, meet you a little bit and hear you speak a few times, so best of luck. Thank and, you for uh, everything you've done for us as well. I well, appreciate it very much. Rick Nab, director of the National Hurricane Center, Hurricane Awareness Tour 2017 here at Reagan National.